Now, have a look at this object. It's a fairly gruesome looking thing. It belongs to the National Museum of Australia, but as you can see, it's not on display in one of their galleries. It's actually being stored here at this massive warehouse with hundreds of other objects. Now, these objects are kept here because museums really don't have the space to display everything that they own at the one time. So we bring them out as we change themes or we want to tell different stories about Australia's past. Now, looking at this, it looks pretty much like Ned Kelly's armour to me. But having spoken to the curators, in fact, it's not. It's a replica and it was made for the 1970 film starring Mick Jagger. Now, many of you will know that Mick Jagger is the lead singer for the Rolling Stones. Terrific singer. One of my favourite singers. But as an actor, he wasn't very good. And the film didn't do very well. So why would the National Museum keep this object? Isn't it sort of a trivial piece of our history? Well, the answer is that oftentimes it's the trivial things of our past that can tell us so much about ourselves. About our heroes, about the things that we think are important, and the things that we want to remember. This is the old Melbourne jail. And as you can see, there's nothing trivial about the exhibits on display here. In fact, these exhibits tell us a lot about Ned Kelly. Our image of ourselves, who we would like to be now, and perhaps what we would like to become in the future. This exhibit, open 120 years after the death of Ned, is a very strong and emotional exhibit. It passes on the traditional image of Ned as the rebel against unfair authority. The man who stood by his mates, almost bigger than life. A man who died game. If someone says to you that you're as game as Ned Kelly, that's an ultimate compliment. Adults queue to see this exhibition. They come to see the helmet, the armour, the death mask, and they come to see the gallows itself. And children come as well. And what this says to me is that the children will go away and they'll take this traditional image with them. Not everybody shares the view that Ned Kelly was in fact a hero. Here outside the State Library of Victoria, there's a very, very impressive statue. But it's not a statue of Ned. In fact, it's a statue of the man who ordered Ned hanged, Judge Redmond Barry. But the statue's not here because he ordered Ned hanged. The statue's here because he founded the State Library. But this does, however, open up a question. Perhaps attitudes towards Ned Kelly are not all one way. Perhaps even today, there are those who believe that Ned Kelly was in fact a villain. This is Stringy Bark Creek in northeastern Victoria. And as you can see, it's pretty rugged country. Now, on the 26th of October, 1878, four policemen came into this area to arrest the Kelly gang. They probably had orders to take them dead or alive. But in fact, the gang ambushed the policemen and called on them to surrender. Now, according to Ned Kelly, Trooper Lonigan went for his gun and Ned, in self-defense, had to shoot him. In the ensuing gun battle, two more policemen were killed but one of them managed to escape on horseback into this rugged bush. Now, this was the first time that the Kellys had killed. Up until now, they'd stolen from people, they'd robbed them of their horses, and they'd even duffed some cattle. Like the Kellys, the police were Irish, and their families mourned and remembered. And when they came here to the Mansfield Cemetery to visit the graves of their loved ones, Scanlon, Lonigan, and Michael Kennedy, they read these words, cruelly murdered by armed criminals. So in their heart of hearts, the Kellys were murderers and the deaths of their loved ones had to be avenged. For two years, the Kelly gang was on the run and they robbed the banks at Gerildery and Euroa. And then it came down to this place, the last stand at Glen Rowan and one of the greatest stories in Australian history was about to unfold. The Kelly gang put on their armour and went into battle. Joe Byrne, Steve Hart and Dan Kelly were either killed in the gunfight or in the fire that burned down Ann Jones's hotel. Ned sustained something like 28 wounds, but he survived, was captured and, well, you know the rest of the story.
So the mystery for you to decide is whether you believe that Ned Kelly was a noble outlaw, a person who fought against the prejudice and injustice of the police, or was he a ruthless killer, a man prepared to take the lives of others to save his own? We want you to put Ned Kelly on trial, just as he was committed for trial here at the Beechworth Courthouse and then sent to Melbourne. Like Judge Barry, you might decide that he deserves to be sentenced to be hanged in the gallows in the old Melbourne jail on the 11th of November, 1880. Or perhaps you'll decide that he deserves his reputation as a hero in Australian history, an icon that will live forever. You be the judge.